Beatmaker versus producer. Prior to the battle, I never heard of one single producer among those who registered except Smokey Smoke Shop, who was a friend of my cousin, Curtis James. I would come to find out that some of the producers were approaching 30 years old, while others were minors and were not supposed to even be in the venue. I didn't anticipate minors joining the battle and didn't even think twice about this situation arising. I was not really familiar with the software at that time, so most of the producers I figured would enter were those using the traditional Triton keyboards or MPC drum machines, which usually meant dudes who had money to spend, and as a result, were usually above 18 years old. I was dead wrong. As we would ask the producers to identify the equipment they used during the application process, we would come to find out it was fairly balanced between hardware and software users. But we later noticed the divide between those from a hardware background feeling that they were the real producers, quote unquote, while considering the software users merely beat makers. Of course, there were many who utilized both hardware and software. But this talk about beat makers versus producers began to take on a life of its own. The software at the time were programs like Cool Edit Pro, Reason, and the widely popular Fruity Loops, which would later become FL Studio as well as various plugins and samples downloaded from various websites. Many of these software programs were crack versions, a.k.a. not paid for. In many cases, producers who used Fruity Loops didn't get the warmest response, simply because the name alone was seen as a joke. The producers who demanded respect used equipment like Triton keyboards, MPC drum machines, Roland MVs, SP1200s, 808s, Technique 1200 turntables, and crates of records. So in essence... You had producers who spent zero dollars on their production arsenal competing with producers who spent upwards of $10,000. The fact that the low investment beat makers were competing and even beating the high investment producers in battles didn't sit well with quite a few people. I suspect the same sentiment was shared when the DJ culture changed from turntables to CDJs and from CDJs to controllers. Change is not always appreciated and I heard countless complaints about software producers somehow being subpar. Over time, we would come to realize that equipment alone doesn't determine your greatness. The creative genius behind the equipment does.